What's up you guys? Today we're talking about stators. Everything you need to know about them, how to test them, the whole nine yards. I'm going to give you the 101 on these things. The whole goal at Rolling Wrench is to make your life easier, whether it's through our videos or our products. So make sure you do a spinning backflip onto that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the little blue bell that's right on the side so you can get notified when new videos come out. As you can see, I spent a ton of time laying out everything to teach you guys everything you need to know about these stators, how to test them, what they do. So let's dive into it. Just to give you a heads up, we will be using GY6 slash QMJ157 stators in this video. If you own a motorcycle, ATV, scooter, it, anything besides this, it's okay. The video will still apply. The reason why I'm using these GY6 stators is because they're a Chinese brand stator and there's literally no specs. Well, there is, but the manuals are all over the place. So I've taken the 15 years that I've been doing this and I've created kind of my own specs. I want to explain to you guys exactly what a stator does, what it looks like, and how to test it. So let's start by what does a stator look like? A stator looks like this. You notice it's mounted to a plate and it has something called a pickup coil on it. Here's another example of a stator. If you notice, this doesn't have a plate. This is more common to see them like this. It's got the coils and the pickup is not mounted to a plate. It just sits just like this. So I wanna make sure that you can understand how to identify a stator because there's two different types. Yours might have, I don't know, 18 of these or 20. This one has six, two, four, six charging coils. And then right here is an exciter coil. How does a stator charge the battery? You know, a stator is kind of like an alternator in a car, if you're familiar with that. But how does that work? This right here is called a magneto. You have to have this in order for the stator to function. These generally don't go bad. And if they do go bad, there's about eight magnets in here, different on all different types of magnetos. You can call this a road or two. Um, but there's a plate in here, so you can't actually see the magnets. These magnets go over the top of the stator just like that. Now, as I spin this magneto, it's generating a current. How is it generating a current? There's magnets in here that, bought, that pass through these coils, and it allows an electric charge to come through the wires at the end. So again, the ones that are copper are the ones that are going to create the charge for the battery. When I put this over the top, if you notice, see that little key down in there, little slit cut? Very important, that goes onto the crankshaft. You got your crankshaft that goes through here, and then this mounts to the end of the crankshaft, just like that. So it's very important on the placement because this is going to matter for your ignition timing. So that's what the key there is there for. So as this spins, just like this, it's, by, it's passing past our pickup coil here. What's the purpose of a pickup coil? Well, every time it passes this thing, it's called a reluctor, it tells the engine when to spark. It comes through here, sends a signal. The exciter coil, that's sending, as this spins, it's sending electricity to charge our CDI box. These coils, they've got only two charging wires. Let me explain. So this green wire, almost always the green wire is going to be ground. So it's just going to the ground, like the negative terminal on your battery, basically. So it's grounding to the stator. That's green. And then you've got your charging coils, yellow and white. These three wires are for charging. These two wires are for ignition, telling the engine when to spark. The next important thing you need to know is your stator AC or DC. If you have this wrap, this extra coil with the wrap over it, that's AC. And then a DC, if you notice, doesn't have that wrap at all on it. Remember I told you that when this magneto spins and this reluctor passes the pickup coil, it tells the engine when to spark and this coil, this AC coil, supplies power to the CDI box. Well, if we go this way, we've got two different types of CDI boxes. We've got DC, direct current. We've got AC. Direct current is if you have your battery power directly powering your CDI box. AC 
it's not coming from the battery, it's power source. It's coming directly from your exciter coil, this guy right here. So it sends, so the power from the exciter coil is this red with the black stripe. That goes in to your AC CDI box. You'll never have an AC stator sending power to a DC CDI box. It's always going to be AC stator with AC CDI. DC stator with DC CDI. Just to get that out of the way. If you mix and match them, you're going to see smoke come out of these when you plug them in. Just a heads up. Right, let's recap. Charging coils, this thing spins. Mag this is called the magneto. The, and that charges the battery through these wires. This is the pickup coil. The pickup coil the reluctor passes the pickup coil and tells the engine when to spark. And the red wire from the exciter coil charges the AC CDI. Now, let me bring this over here. This one, you notice there's one less wire. That's because it's not AC. It's not charging the CDI box with an exciter coil. So if you have that, you'll have a DC CDI box. Now, inside the CDI box, you remember points back in the day. You'd adjust the points and that's kind of how it would tell the engine when to spark. Well, the CDI box does it digitally. So that remember that's that's this red with the black stripe is supplying power to the AC CDI box. And if you have a DC, this guy, your power is coming directly from the battery. It'll calculate its timing and then spit out the spark signal into your ignition coil, which then goes to your spark plug and sparks. I have a whole entire video on AC and DC CDI boxes, everything you need to know about CDI boxes, but I just wanted to make sure you understand. When I say AC CDI box, all of them are going to pump out AC power, not all of them are going to supply AC power to the CDI box. Make sure you understand that. So this will go into a rectifier regulator. I got a whole different video for that. So I feel like I've repeated myself a bunch. I hope you understand how the uh, stator works and kind of the ignition system. This should kind of go over everything really. Now let me explain to you how to test these suckers. Just as a little heads up, in order to get your magneto off of the crankshaft, you'll need a little tool like this. It's called a flywheel puller. It just threads into the end there. If you notice you have threads there, and then you tighten the bolt down on top of here and then it pushes it out. And then you can remove your magneto. If you're not getting any spark from your engine, the first thing I would check, now generally this doesn't happen out of the blue. This happens if you've just built an engine, you've never used this before, or it's a new stator or something like that. If you notice this gap here, that has a spec. You have, you'll have to get some feeler gauges and find out what your spec is and then you slide your feeler gauge right through the pickup and the reluctor there to make sure that the gap is correct. If it's not, see these screws? You can loosen those up and move it up and down, but some of them you actually have to bend up and down. That's the reluctor gap, very important, or the pickup gap. So if you don't have any spark, look there. Here's the portion of the video where I'm gonna get deep into how to test your stator. I've already showed you how to test the pickup coil gap. Now let's focus on these GY6 stators. But before we do that, there is a few things I need you to learn. This symbol right here, this is ohms. Very important because we have our multimeter here and we need to know where that symbol is and what it looks like. And then you've got VAC, that's alternating current volts. Then you've got VDC, that's direct current volts. I think these terms are really important that you need to know when you're working with one of these multimeters. You can pick these up in an auto parts store really cheap for under $10. Or you can get them for, you know, hundreds of dollars. Depends how fancy you want to go. So you need to pick up, if you don't have one already, a multimeter. This is a decent one. It's a Craftsman. It's not top of the line or anything. As long as it has ohms, remember the ohm symbol there? And then you have VAC, alternating current volts, right there. Then you have VDC, direct current volts. 
you need to have those three things in order to test a stator, very important. For testing a stator, you notice there's a couple different ports there. The black one is gonna go to common, that's your ground. Okay, pops in there. And then we're gonna test volts and ohms, so we wanna use, almost always you're gonna be using this, at least for stator testing, you'll always use that. We won't be using this plug. So get that plugged in, and we'll do our first test, set this to ohms, the lowest setting. Notice there's a bunch of different ones, so set it to the lowest setting. When I power this sucker up, it's gonna say I. This screen's a little difficult to read, but I. Doesn't look like that in real life, I can assure you. <laughs> and then if he says, oh well, that's open line. So let me explain. When you're testing things, I wouldn't use a metal table. Because if you notice, if I take the metal table and I go like this, touch these two probes back here to the metal table, we've got a connection because it's metal. Does that make sense? So you want to make sure that you're not using a metal table. So I'll put this napkin down. I just want to show you kind of what we're looking for. So here's a wire. If you notice it says I on there. If I take my connectors, touch them, you know we get a reading. If I take this wire and clip it, try it again, obviously you're just going to get I there. It's an open line or I. So I want to make sure you understand what we're doing. That's what ohms will do. It will tell us if there's a wire broken. Okay. So here's our DC direct current. Remember, it doesn't have a little wrap over the top of it, just like this one does. Okay. 12 pole. One, two, three, four, all the way, count them all. There's 12 poles there. So it's a DC 12 pole, three phase. What does three phase mean? There's three charging coil pa power wires coming out. Okay. Three phase. So we're going to be probing these wires, sticking this in there and this one in there. It's really difficult to actually get a nice connection. So what I normally do is just get some connector and then I can stick them in there. It makes testing way easier. But they're not touching each other. Just to go through these wires, these are the charging wires. These will charge the battery. Okay? It's three yellow wires. They're all charging wires. Nothing to do with the ignition because it's a direct current stator. Blue wire is the pickup coil signal. This unit right here, the pickup coil. Okay, blue wire, white stripe. And then green, that's your ground wire. Okay, so it's very important that the ground, negative, and the positive charging wire, wires are not touching each other. So I need to make sure that these charging wires are not touching any ground wires. Very, very important. Honestly, it doesn't matter which way you're doing, but just for to make it less confusing, ground is black, red is positive. First, let's see if the ground wire is not broken. So here's where our ground wire is going in. So touch there, touch there. We've got a resistance reading, meaning that the wire is not broken. The ground wire is not broken. Okay, I'm just going to pull this off of here. Now, one thing we want to make sure is our ground is not touching any of these yellows. I mean, we can, it'd be very difficult to visually see if that's happening. So we need to use our multimeter to inspect that. Put one probe to the ground wire, the other probe to each and every one of these. So I'll touch here, I'll touch here, I'll touch here. Every time I do that, I'm getting this I, which is open, or you might, your multimeter might say OL, open. That is great. That's what we want. We don't want there to be any type of touching between those. That's test number one, okay? That's, so that'd be the charging. If your battery's not charging and your stator looks all burned up, chances are the yellow and the green are touching each other. Okay, the next test that we need to do, we need to go back to ohms here, the low setting, what I need to do is I need to put negative there, positive there, those two connection points. Kind of difficult to do with one hand. And you should get the same reading as if I went like this. Same reading if I went like this. So you, all your connections points would be the same. Let me illustrate that. So I got two of the yellow wires. Got 1.1. Now I'm gonna to go to another variation. 
Should be 1.1 as well. Perfect. And I'm going to go the other way, 1.1. So, so the way that I'm testing, I'll go from here to here, here to here, and here to here. Does that make sense? Very simple. They all should be exactly the same. Don't worry about really the number that it spits out. Just make sure they're the same. This will be the same test for any stator. Next one, we're gonna check, check the pickup coil. Now on a DC 12 pole stator, our spec, 130 to 160 ohms. So let's try this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put one probe on the ground right here and the other probe to the other end. I'm blue with the white stripe. So there we go. And let me show you the reading. So we got 144.7. Now the spec is anywhere from 130 to 160 ohms. So we're in spec, we're good there. That was our pickup. Now the reluctor gap, I showed you all about that. That's gonna be the gap between the pickup and the reluctor, this small gap down in there. And you're gonna to need to get yourself a set of feeler gauges. You can get these at an auto parts store. Our spec is gonna be 0 .008 to 0 .020. Now, if you notice that on the other stator that I just showed you, it has a plate. This is actually gonna bolt your engine and then you're gonna have your magneto over the top. It'll, in short, look just like this one. And then, you know, you stick your feeler gauge through there, set, figure out if your gap's correct. If it's wrong, then you either have to bend this down or some have a slot where you can move it up and down. That's very, very important because so, if you're not getting any spark, that could be the reason. So we've got the 12 pole stator all wrapped up. You understand how to test it. Now we've got the 11 pole stator. Same exact thing, except for now this has an AC and it's an 11 pole instead of a 12 pole. And we've got an exciter coil, whereas before we didn't have an exciter coil. The exciter coil wire, remember, is the red with the black stripe through it. The only difference with this stator is we need to learn how to do the exciter coil test. The only reason that you would even do the exciter coil test is if the engine's not starting. If you're having charging system problems, don't even worry about this test because this is purely no start issues. So what you need to do is you need to get your multimeter there. Go to VAC, alternating current volts. Go to low setting, 200. With everything still plugged into the bike, all you need to do is take your negative, run that to the negative on the battery or the ground, and take your positive with this still plugged in, don't unplug it. Touch this sucker, crank it over, try to start it with the fully charged battery. You should get at least 50 volts. Okay, final test, but I'm gonna go to 2000 on there. Okay, just say I still. And then I'm gonna take this green wire. I've got a little terminal connector I'm gonna poke in there. Make, makes it easier to test, obviously. Then we've got our other wire, red with a black stripe. So those are the two wires that I'm gonna test. So I'm gonna set this right here. And then I'm gonna test negative to ground. You wanna make sure you're not just touching like this, pinching it down between your fingers because your body has a resistance reading. I'm doing this really carefully. Okay, we got 394, which I did this earlier and got 393. The spec is between 350 and 600. So I showed you how to test the DC 12 pole three phase stator. There are the specs if you need to pause the video. This is for a GY6 QMJ157. I showed you how to test the AC 11 pole three phase stator. Same things for a GY6. All the specs are here. And then I could show you how to do this AC eight pole two phase, but I don't need to. It's exactly the same specs as all of these. However, I did get different numbers in the green there. Then I did the other ones. But the specs are exactly the same. If you notice, this says two phase. The only difference between two phase and three phase is, notice there's not three yellow wires. 
there's only a yellow, a white, that's two phase. So you can always take an eight pole stator and upgrade to an 11 pole or a 12 pole. But if you upgrade to an 11 pole, you'll need another, a different rectifier regulator, which we've got kits for that. And if you wanted to upgrade to a 12 pole, you'd need a different rectifier regulator and a CDI box. We've got some things for that too. So make sure you slam the subscribe button. Appreciate you watching. Leave a comment and we'll see you in the next video.